but I'm going to skip a rank about the number three so far. Are you crazy? If Dad finds you, he'll bury you under the patio. Find me. Are you kidding? Stealth is my middle name. Nomeo tries to win Fair Juliet's heart in the new animated take on the classic tale. Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to another week at the movies. I'm Nathan from Shot and Cut Films, here to talk to you about what's going on at the theaters and on DVD. The first movie we're going to talk about this week is... Nomeo and Juliet. Ah. Red gnomes and blue gnomes have been enemies forever! Oh. Nomeo and Juliet is the familiar story of Romeo and Juliet, but with gnomes. Yes, you heard right, gnomes. Those little garden people that populate the lawns of families across America. In this version, the Capulets and the Montagues are the little old man and the lady next door who just can't stand each other, and neither can their gnomes. Filled with lawnmower races and secret yard-on-yard -yard infiltration sequences, Nomeo and Juliet can be quite silly and sometimes a bit corny, but aided by the fine voice acting of James McAvoy as Nomeo, Emily Blunt as Juliet, along with some wonderful supporting work by Jason Statham, Michael Caine, and others, this film overcomes the cliches to be quite a surprising treat. And it doesn't hurt that the soundtrack was written by Elton John and the score by the amazing James Newton Howard. With this much talent, it's hard to go wrong, even with an animated remake of a Shakespeare classic performed by garden statues. Three stars for Nomeo and Juliet. Once we got married, I thought she'd stop hooking. You need to put this wedding van on a true heart. That's what it feels like. Our next film is Just Go With It. Another Adam Sandler romantic comedy from Dennis Dugan and his Happy Madison team. This time, Sandler is joined by Jennifer Aniston as a plastic surgery assistant that he convinces to pose as his soon-to-be ex-wife so he can get with a younger woman that he screwed up with by allowing her to find a fake wedding ring that he's been using for 20 years to get laid. Things get complicated when Aniston's kids are involved in the little con. The kids are really cute, but mostly they're just used to prolong the plot and add a whole lot of insult to injury. Soon the kids, Aniston, the younger woman Sandler's wooing, and Sandler's friend Dolph Lundgren, don't ask, all take off to Hawaii because the teacher and surgeon don't have any responsibilities, I guess. This begins a non-stop lie festival that just goes on and on until you wonder if anyone could possibly say something true. All in all, there are a couple laughs and some sweet moments, but we know exactly where it's going way before it gets there, and most of the jokes are pretty weak. So, a huge step up from Grown Ups, but still not quite good enough to recommend. Two stars for Just Go With It. Our new commander, Marcus Aquila. Fourth cohort of Gauls, second legion. Next up, The Eagle, the story of a military leader named Marcus Aquila played by Channing Tatum, who after being honorably discharged for his wounds and a gallant rescue of his soldiers, sets off on a journey to find a golden eagle. The eagle represents the honored standard for the Roman Empire and was lost many years prior by his father. He is joined on his journey by his newly appointed slave named Esca, played by Jamie Bell, whose life Marcus saved in a coliseum. The journey is filled with plenty of danger, fighting, and harsh environments that are stunningly shot by cinematographer Anthony Dodd Mantle, but the heart of the story lies in the two men, slave and master, who form a friendship along the way. This is also the problem. Because so much time is afforded to the environments, rituals, and fighting, there is little time for this friendship to blossom. So it is more implied than anything, leaving little room for emotion. So while I do think this movie is worth seeing, it's not as good as it could have been. Two and a half stars for The Eagle. Alright, time to get into the trailers. Oh, I'm excited about the trailers this week, guys. We are going to show you three of the biggest summer blockbusters coming out. These all were on the Super Bowl this past weekend, and if you missed them, oh, you missed some goodies. 
Our first step is for a little film called Thor. If he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. We'll see you soon enough. God, I hope you're not crazy. <laughs> Whatever happens, stay who you are. Not just a soldier, but a good man. How do you feel? Taller. What do you think? I think it works. So, did that look pretty awesome or what? Thor, Captain America, Transformers, and new Transformers looks pretty awesome. The last one was eh, but this one looks pretty sweet. We'll see. On our only full-length trailer this week, we visit some familiar friends with some new faces. shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States. The cost of freedom is always high. No one can foresee precisely what cost it will take. One path we shall never choose, and that is the path of surrender. Ready for this? Let's find out. Listen to me very carefully, my friend. Killing will not bring you peace. Peace was never an option. Next up, we're going to talk about what's new on DVD. Our first new to DVD is You Again, an atrocious pile of celluloid starring Kristen Bell, Odette Yesman, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Sigourney Weaver. Absolutely nothing works in this over-the-top farce, and honestly, I was just embarrassed for everyone involved. This goes in my horrible, repugnant crap jar. Half a star for You Again. Next up on DVD is for Colored Girls, Tyler Perry's awful adaptation of an award-winning play. I don't know if someone forgot to tell Mr. Perry that in adapting a play to film, the biggest part of his job is to make it feel like reality. And despite good performances from a talented cast, this film is the fakest bit of misery porn I've ever seen. Children are killed, women are raped, abortions are performed, and afterwards every actress gives a five minute monologue. This was truly painful to sit through. One star for For Colored Girls. Next up, it's kind of a funny story. A coming of age film about a suicidal 16 year old who checks himself into a mental hospital instead of jumping off a bridge. Inside, he makes friends, falls for a girl, and learns to appreciate his life. Now, this movie is not without its problems, and 
does stretch believability a bit, but it's very aware of its shortcomings. And with good performances by newcomer Keir Gilchrist, Emma Roberts, and Zach Galifianakis, along with some big laughs, I really enjoyed it. Three stars for It's Kind of a Funny Story. Our last new to DVD is Life as We Know It, yet another romantic comedy starring Katherine Heigl as a single woman who just can't seem to find the right man. They're going to start calling this Heigl Syndrome if she keeps this up any longer. In this version of the familiar story, Heigl and Josh Duhamel's characters are reluctantly stuck raising a child when their best friends both die in a car accident. There's a lot to this film that reminded me of Knocked Up, and there's also a lot of heart, but the thing missing is good writing and believable characters. This is a step up for Heigl, but only a small one. Two stars for life as we know it. All right, that's going to do it for our show this week. Be sure to tune in next week where I'll have brand new reviews of I Am Number 4 and also Unknown starring Liam Neeson. Also, in two weeks, we're going to have a full Oscar recap and I will pick all of the best in every category. From all of our people at Shot and Cut Films, we thank you for watching.